Hello, welcome back to another one of Zug's Guides on Broadside Gaming. So today we're following up with the whole Carillion theme and we're having a look at the Handmaiden. So, you probably haven't seen me play the Handmaiden very much on live streams. She's good, I just prefer the shade. So with the Handmaiden, she's got increased dog, uh, dog distance, uh, dodge distance by 15% and dash. So you jump forward. Renewal, or that increases stamina regeneration speed by 100%, which is amazing. And Ariel's Venison increases Carillion's revive speed by 50%. When Carillion revives allies, she heals them for 20 health. Eh, it's all right. You know, it's good. It's not amazing, but you know, it's good. So. The build we're going to be using is Spirit Echo, damaging multiple enemies in one swing with a melee weapon, grants temporary health, maximum five enemies. A sorry electricity, I can't fucking say it. Blocking an attack or pushing grants Krillin's next two strikes, 30% attack speed and 10% power. It's very good though. I might not be able to pronounce it, but it's very good. Smiter, first enemy hit always counts as staggered, deal 20% more damage to staggered enemies each hit, blah, blah, blah. It's the same as it is for every other person. So it's the staggery one. Willow Stance. Dodging grants 5% attack speed for 6 seconds, stacking up to 3 times. Pretty good. Birch Stance. Reduce block cost by 30%. You know how much I love my block cost. And Power from Pain. Each enemy hit with dash grants 5% critical strike chance for 15 seconds, stacked up to 5 times. So this is quite a high damage, high attack speed, high crit build. But it does rely on you doing a lot of shit to maintain it. So you're not inherently strong. You have to do a lot of dodging, pushing, and dashing all the time to keep these buffs up. But it is quite an enjoyable playstyle. It's very um, keyboard intensive. You're gonna, you're always gonna be doing things to try and maintain your buffs, basically. So if you like that sort of gameplay, then the Handmaiden definitely for you. With this build, we will be using the Spear and Shield. And so in the properties you're going to be wanting are Block Cost and Power versus Skaven with Opportunist. And Opportunist increases the push strength by 50% when used against an attacking enemy. Uh, you want this basically to hit some of the uh, breakpoints to be able to push Chaos Warriors, Vesticles, all that armoured goodness. Uh, using the Moonfire Bow as well, which is Power versus Infantry and Power versus Skaven with Barrage. And the necklace is health, block cost, and bark skin. So more block cost. Can't get enough. Your charm's going to be power versus inventory, power versus scaven with decanter. And the trinket, curse resist, crit chance, and shrapnel. Again, if you're running a cataclysm, change the curse resist to stamina recovery. So on the whole, it's 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 a very weird build to play with if you're not used to it. I'm st I still find it a bit weird to play with, but I'm more of a shade player than a handmaiden. But the Spear and Shield is very different than all the other shield weapons in the game. On the one hand, you have very, very fast light stabs, which deal decent damage to hordes, and just really high crit on headshots. And on the other, you still have a shield, where you're going to be blocking and pushing, which is very important to this build, by the way. Just, you know, blocking in general, it's always good for you, but pushing, you know, it's a lot like the Foot Knight you want to push to maintain your buff. But as you've got a shield, it does mean you have a natural 6% block cost reduction and your pushes will stagger most elites movesets. So you can uh, cancel out elites with the push, which is just fucking ridiculously good. Uh, so when fighting a horde, use push and heavy attack combos. The heavy attack has insane cleave value and the push will provide you with just massive amounts of crowd control when fighting elites use push attack heavy attack heavy attack the push will stagger um storm vermin besticles maulers most of the time i'm not saying 100 percent of the time because it's not it's just most and even if they are doing an overhead you can always abuse your ridiculously high uh block ability and with willow stance spear and shield already has enough attack speed so you don't need to be using swift slaying so opportunist uh, it's just the best thing to go for for staggering um, storm vermin, maulers, bestigals, and just getting them out of their bullshit overhead attacks. 
they are bullshit. You round a corner and there's a halberd in your face already. It's fucking irritating as shit. Uh, so the staggering breakpoints are 20% Skaven and Asari Alacricity. I still can't fucking say it. So yeah, those two. And you can pretty much uh, push stagger anything out for their overhead attack moves. So yeah, you're incredibly defensive, but really, really offensive. That makes sense. Just, uh, try it. It's a fun build. It's just it takes a lot of getting used to. Because you will have to be, you will be dashing around. I get motion sick when I play this. There's, there's far too much. So look, you'll be dashing around. There's lots of movement, blocking, pushing, dodging from side to side. You literally always want to be dodging. To keep Willow stance. It's Willow stance, isn't it? Yeah, well, you, you want to be dodging all the time to keep Willow stance up, pushing. But also, if you look, you do have an insane amount of stamina as well. So just smack them really hard. Yeah, it's a fun build. So give it a go and uh, try not to get as motion sick as I do. And with that, I hope you have enjoyed the guide, folks. And I shall see you all again for the next one. So see you later.